going on YouTube this is Necro Steve and today we have a narrated PU Wi-Fi battle that's not PU as and as in these Pokemon stink this is just the the never used of the never used tier so if you guys enjoy some PU action make sure you leave a like uh, I've kind of been experimenting with different tiers as of late I'm also kind of getting back into actually building teams for OU if you haven't noticed my last few uploads for battles have just been kind of me bringing a smorgasbord of things in this battle this is actually the first battle that i had with persian uh, nicknamed nana this is just a fake out lead it's holding silk scarf and i mainly just use it for fake out and u-turn just scouting and shipping away at things it also has return and a bite for extra damage in the other flinch chances but i don't really use it that much uh, i also have a lumberry uh dredagon that i bred back in fitrin it still hits hard as it's a nice bulky build, fun to use. Uh, rapid Spin, Stealth Rock, Knockoff, Earthquake, Sand Slash, Defensive Build, very reliable. Knockoff is of course a lot better now with the increased damage. And I like running Knockoff on more bulky Pokemon because they are it's a lot easier to get it off with them. And it's typically, uh, they're typically going to bring in something more offensively oriented on a bulky Pokemon. So removing the items from an offensively oriented Pokemon helps a little bit more with the types of teams that I run. Uh, we also have a Sharp Beak Dodrio and a specially defensive um, Mantine. And as you can see, he had a lot of threats on his team, but um, the main the main thing we're going to be dealing with here is this Meow Stick. I didn't know what it wanted to do, but I was expecting it to set up screens. So I kind of just wanted to get rid of its Light Clay if it was holding it. As I switch out to my Sand Slash, I do get a confirmation that he is running screens. I just went ahead and knock off the light clay so that at least when he sets up the light screen or when he comes back in the set of screens later, the screens will not last as long. Now, of course, the reflect cut down the damage that my knockoff did, allowing him to live it quite handily right there. I just put up my stealth rocks to put a little bit of offensive pressure on him, and then I switch out, uh, hoping that he'll just continue to go for psychic. And he does, which is good because my man team does not take very much damage at all from psychic being specially defensive. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, Mantine was kind of the especially defensive counterpart for Skarmory in second gen. They have comparable stats, just kind of switched to be specially oriented as opposed to Skarmory's more physically oriented. But that's neither here nor there. Noctowl is also typically a little bit more specially bulky. I do get a freeze with Ice Beam, but that doesn't really end up mattering too much in the long run. Uh, it, we can see there how well Noctowl took an Ice Beam. Granted, I don't have any special uh, attack investment on that Mantine but still, it's super effective. He just goes for Defog, I expected that, so I went ahead and brought in Dodrio, hoping that I could get some uh, good sharp beak base damage off, but I actually forgot that the Reflect up reflect was up for a turn. So this Brave Bird isn't going to do very much at all to Crustle. Between Reflect and Crustle having great physical defense, uh, that was kind of a waste of a time, as he has the Rocky Helmet as well. So we're just gonna switch out of there one more time, back in the sand slash, expecting his Stealth Rocks. And instead of spinning away his Rocks, since he has a defogger, I'm going to set up my own rocks, expecting him, if he wants to get rid of rocks, he's going to have to get rid of them for us both, because I expected him to just go ahead and attack me. Um, and that's kind of a fun mind game to play. It's like, should I set up mine or get rid of his? If he has a defogger, I lose very little by setting up mine. Now, the stealth rocks do really suck for Mantine, Dodrio, and Magmar, so I am hoping that he will defog at some point. But in the meantime, trying to take out the crustal, I do get burned status with Scald on the first Scald there, but that wasn't really needed. I guess the Rock Slide would have done a little bit more damage, as in it would have done three quarters of my HP, but I still would have lived it. So uh, he decides to go out now and set up Light Screen. I just decided to go for Confuse Ray because I couldn't stop him from setting up the Light Screen. I knew a Scald or an Ice Beam wouldn't kill. So this is the next best thing to either force him to switch out or hit himself in confusion and then I get a free hit off on him, which may lead to a burn. Uh, so 
Confuser, it kind of was the best play for me right there if he did decide to switch out after putting up the light screen. He does switch out now, trying to preserve his Meow Stick to set up screens later on. And I hit the Noctowl, but with the light screen up, Noctowl is going to be able to take a Scald, and it doesn't get burned. And then I'm going to go for an Ice Beam as he goes for a Defog, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And I actually don't think that I KO with this Ice Beam either, because Noctowl is amazing. Uh, so my plan in him getting rid of his own rocks did work out, but I'm unable to get rid of the Noctowl. And to pay me back for freezing him earlier, he actually hits the Hypnosis, which is very surprising that number one, that he was using that move, and number two, that it actually hit. Not a very reliable move, but it definitely worked out for him. But what he doesn't know is that I have Sleep Talk, so we're just gonna hold on to that for Sleep Fodder until later. Go out into Nana, expecting the Nightshade for some residual damage. Also, he may have gone for a Toxic. Uh, and he's gonna actually switch out immediately in the Grand Bull, which I'm okay with. I still get a little bit of damage off on it, and I didn't know what he was running. I could have gone for a U-turn, but it's resisted. And he could have been a Scarf Gramble or something strange. So I just went directly out into Eviolite Magmar to burn him. I did not expect him to have Earthquake for some reason. I I just haven't seen that on Gramble generally. But anyways, though, I did burn it. So that makes it considerably easier to deal with. The Intimidate uh, ability is still pretty annoying. But now I can come back in with Nana. It's almost dead from the fake out without the Intimidate. And after the burn, I'm going to be able to KO with the U-turn. So that worked out okay. I did lose Magmar in the process, but Magmar wasn't that useful against his remaining team members anyway. So that's kind of why I played that the way I did. Granted, I wasn't expecting Earthquake, but that's okay. As he brings out Meowstic with barely any HP, he just sets up a Reflect. I figured he would do that, so I just went straight for Outrage. I have Lumberry, so I'll snap out of Confusion after my two or three turns anyway. And Furret is something that I immensely underestimated in this battle. It turns out that his Furret is Banded. And uh, I have a Furret, but my Furret is a weird defensive uh, switcheroo set. And so I wasn't familiar with the damage output that Furret had. And I was looking at the damage that it did to me with the U-turn, and I was like, that was a lot of damage. Maybe that was a high roll or something. But I was expecting him to be Scarf, so I was playing as if he were a Scarf Furret. Because I can see that working out with Furrets above average speed, being able to revenge things pretty simply. Um, we just switch out into Alpha here, expecting another Scald. I get my HP back from the Water Absorb. I was actually fearing that his Corsola had Water Absorb as well, but I wanted to kind of test for that. Now his Reflect wears off. I wake up because I kind of just guessed that I was going to wake up. That was a lucky guess, and I <laughs> ended up going for Ice Beam as I woke up. And he still lives without the light screen up. This Noctowl has some serious staying power. But instead of roosting, he decides to go for a Nightshade. And I'm able to take him down with an Ice Beam with my own Mantine at half HP, basically. So it's very prone to being revenge killed right here. Uh, especially if Corsola has a rock type move. Fortunately for me, Corsola does not have water absorb. And he actually ends up going for Mirror Coat, which I also did not ex expect. So this is kind of um like Misty's. Uh, Corsola using Mirror Coat, which is severely overpowered in the show. Uh, Corsola and Wabafa using that move a lot. But I'm able to take out Corsola with another Scald after two turns of burn damage, which is very good. And then he brings back out Biscuit the Furret, and expecting him to just go for a U turn again, I go out into Dodrio, but he just decides to go for Double Edge at this point because there's no. I don't think he has any other Pokemon left. And so after that critical hit taking out Dodrio, I still didn't know what item he had, so I had to play this super safe or I would have lost to Furred in the end game here, because basically everything that I have can be taken out by a double edge uh, from a banded fur, that is Stab, and it is a very high base power move. I do have Sucker Punch on Goji, and I also have Fake Off from Nana, so I wasn't that worried about it, but at the same time, I didn't want any surprises. But that was a pretty fun game. I only had two Pokemon left in the very end, uh, so that was pretty close as well. So I hope you enjoyed this PU match. Uh, be sure to check out my Mega Series, Overview Series. Mega Glalie is coming up next. I'll probably have that up on Monday. And uh, I'll have a battle up next Tuesday. I'm really happy to be back in sync and in line with uploading things and healed up from pneumonia and all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching my content. And I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.